we've been doing this ritual every year at First Church, close to St. Francis uh, Feast Day, every year in October. And last year during COVID, we started doing it outside, though my favorite way to do it is inside that sanctuary in a beautiful statement that all creation is welcome in God's house. Amen? So next year, we'll be back inside, God willing, and the creek don't rise, right? Today's animal blessing is sort of a full circle moment for me today. I brought this ritual to First Church my first year here, despite some trepidation on the part of the leaders, <laughs> and it has become one of our most beloved traditions. And seven and a half years later, I have a dog named Holly, and I am leaving for Italy tomorrow to learn. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Happy Pastor Appreciation Day, I guess. Um, but I'm going there to learn about St. Francis in Assisi um, with a group of female pastors and two professors of religion. And it's, it was supposed to happen in 2020, and now it's happening tomorrow, and I can't quite believe it. <laughs> but... I was never a lover of animals, and now, I, now I'm a scholar <laughs> of animals. So St. Francis was born, Francis Bernadone, in the end of the 12th century, and it was a time like now when the world was turned upside down. The year that Francis was born, Jews were being persecuted all over Europe. The Pope and the Emperor of Byzantium were arguing bitterly and there were struggles over power among all the nations of the West. The rich were very rich and the poor were very, very poor and the gap between them was getting larger and larger. Does this sound familiar? It was a time very much like ours when greed and the desire for power over others was strong. And Francis was born to a wealthy family and lived a mostly very self-indulgent life though he was known for being very generous to the poor. He wasn't particularly religious as a young man, and he definitely liked to partay. And then, and then he began to have visions. He believed the visions came from God, and they caused him to look at his life and repent for doing so much for his own pleasure and so little to help others. And so one day he went out and found one of the many beggars in his town and asked to trade clothes with him. And he gave away his money and all of his possessions and set out to live a life of poverty and love. Needless to say, the people around, all around him thought he was crazy. Even the church at the time, which didn't really like having a renegade religious man running around telling people to give away their possessions didn't benefit them much either. But Francis went along his way and grew in his own personal example of compassion based on what he thought best showed the love of Jesus in the world. By simply doing that, he ended up offering some very challenging ideas to the powerful people of his time, the powers of the church and the powers of the kings of Europe. In Francis's time, it was believed that importance, power, and riches came from God and that those in power were closer to God. It was also taught that humans were the ones who were lords of all creation through the command of God, right, which was in Genesis, where God asked Adam and Eve to take care of the animals and the plants and the earth. They took this to mean that animals were inferior and therefore, their lives were just not as important as humans, which also meant that humans who had less power just weren't as important as humans who had a lot of money. So Francis was all about turning things on their head and went out and got rid of the power given to him by the world and tried instead to live by the power that he thought came from God, the power of love, the life of compassion, the power that is exemplified in the dog, right? His effort to show loving example led him to see and experience the connections between all beings on the earth and to find ways to build connections where fear has built walls. Amen. 
The Wolf of Gubbio is a beautiful reminder of why we need to build connections where fear builds walls. The importance of seeing the need and the hunger behind the eyes of those who might lash out at you. There are always ways we can open our hearts to one more creature who seems foreign, scary, and not one of us. We can all be tamed by the love of God when it comes from other humans every single day, when we are gentle with each other, when we feed each other. We will bless our animal companions today because they remind us to be kind, that the power of love can bridge all difference. We need not speak the same language, move in the same way, or even eat the same things. We can love one another and show love despite our inability to connect using words. And what a gift that is, especially now. May we bravely show that example of love in the world wherever we go. Amen.